just when you thought it was going to be the AVP Tour, starring Phil, Big D Dollhauser, and the Professor Todd Rogers, the fellas from Hawaii, Mike Lambert and Steinmetzger, had a luau of a good time winning the Sacramento Open. Today, will the boys get serious again, or will we have new teams battling for the crown here in Seaside Heights, New Jersey? The best athletes on sand will bring the heat to the beach. It's the 2006 ABP Seaside Heights Open. You know what, here in Seaside Heights, yeah, you've got the sand, you've got the water, but you've got fried Oreos. You've got fried peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And you know what, if you don't have your sunscreen on today, you're going to get fried. Because it is hot and the action is intense as we welcome you to the other coast on the Atlantic Ocean as we are set for the 2006 ABP Crocs Tour Seaside Heights Open. Now remember in years past we were down the road in Belmar. Now we're here in Seaside and we are thrilled to see some new finalists here today. Let's meet them officially. Here is Chris McGee. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls across the United States of America, this is Seaside Heights, the Jersey Shore. Are you ready? This is the men's final. Today we'll crown a new champion for 2006. This young man grew up in Honolulu, Hawaii. He went to the University of Hawaii in 1999. He was the Rookie of the Year. Last year he won the last three tournaments, giving him five open wins. 2004, he was best of the beat. Say hello to Sir Sean Scott and look at the physique. Oh, look at him, man. That takes hard work, my brother. Good to see you back, Shawnee. Good luck to you, kid. His partner grew up in Santa Barbara, East Beach. He went to San Marcos High School. He has 14 open wins. He's one of the great professionals, one of the great all-around players of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, he goes by one name only. Say hello to Dax. Holdren, and he's back. members. They've been in the finals four years in a row on the Jersey Shore. This kid went to Estancia High School. Then he went to Stanford. He was a four-time All-American. He was a 1997 national champion, one of the best blockers in the world. Say hello to the golden god. He is long and lean. Matthew Furbringer. He is a team Fletch member. He is back. His partner grew up in the city of sin, Las Vegas, Nevada. Since the time he was a little boy, they told him he would never win in college. So he went to BYU and he won a national championship. Then they said, you'll never win on the ABP Crop Store. Well, he's won three times. Say hello to the kid, Casey Jennings. Fire. Well, I think Casey Jennings is happy to be back on center court Jackson here for the Shaw. finals in beautiful New Jersey. The AVP Crotch Store Seaside Heights Open is being brought to you by Refreshingly Smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. By Crocs, nowhere close to normal. By Nautica, Navigate Light. And as always, the AVP Tour reminds you to be they responsibly. So who will win for the first time in 2006? Will it be Matt Furbringer and his partner Casey the Kid Jennings? Or could the other team playing in their first finals this year, Sean Scott and Dax Holdren, reign supreme here on the Jersey Shore? Well, hi again, everybody. Mike Culver, joined as always by Sinjin Smith. Great to be with you on this holiday weekend from the Jersey Shore. You know, I was once asked, do you want to change partners? And I said, I'll never leave Sinjin Smith. That's the same thing Casey Jennings and Matt Furbringer said in this uh, tumultuous offseason. Well, you know, they're the only team that has stayed together after all the changes there were last year. And, and for good reason. They complement each other very well. Big blocker, great defensive player. They both can play all facets of the game. And they're doing very well. They were one of the most consistent teams last year. They start out this season a little slow, but they're right where they want to be in the finals now. Well, finally where they want to be, the team of Dax Holdren and Sean Scott. I talked to Sean Scott about this moments ago. I said, when Todd Rogers said he was going for Big Phil, Phil Dahlhauser, did you understand? He said, yes, I understood. And you know what? I still want to win with my new partner, Dax. Well, you know what? Scott, uh, 
he didn't lose out, really. I mean, he's playing with Dax Holden, one of the best players on the tour defensively, a great all-around player, a great settling factor. He is one of the best players. So I don't think Scott really lost out in that trade. You know what? Everyone on the men's side has a chance to win every single week, including Casey Jennings and Matt Furbringer. They're on the sand with Mary Strong. Casey, you've been playing together for four years. You've been traveling for seven weeks. And yesterday, you guys had it out, talked about all the stuff that's been bothering you. Did that blowout help give you back on track and help propel you to the finals today? Yeah, communication and just understanding each other a little more. And we hadn't done it in a while. We needed to do it, let some things out, and come back together just like uh, we always do. That's why we stuck together so long, because we get through the hard times to get to the good ones. Matt? You beat this team every time you played them this year. What's been the secret? We've been real consistent with our side out, real solid, and we've been, I mean, we've been getting some blocks and playing great defense. Nothing fancy, man, but we played real consistent against them. That's what we have to do against a team that's as good as them. All right, gentlemen, good luck out there. Thank you. Mike? All right, Mary, thank you very much. All right, time for Sinjin Smith to help us navigate the match. Brought to you by Nautica. Well, what do you think these guys are going to do, Mike? Well, I'm going to let you know. Burbringer, keep the fire. Listen, yeah, that's right. Burbringer and Jennings, keep the fire. They're great when they're ahead and they're rolling. they got to keep the fire, keep it going. Furby block, the big Furbringer. Big block at the net. If he blocks three balls a, a, a game, they'll probably win this match. Now, Holdren and Scott, what do they got to do? Jumpy. You know what jumpy is? That's the jump serve. That's right. They got a jump serve. They both got good serves. They got to use them, especially against the win. And they got to stay strong. They played a lot of matches. This is their eighth match in this event, even though it's spread out over three days. That's a lot of wear and tear in the sun, in the humidity here in New Jersey. And it is hot here in Jersey today. Our rules here on the AVP Crocs Tour. Bets two out of three games. The first two games are played to 21 points. The third to 15, if needed, rally scoring. A point is scored on every play, and you must win each game by two points. Like earlier this year, when Jennings and Furbringer suffered a 36-34 loss. Yes, you must win each game by two points. So four new finalists for 2006 all have tasted victory before on the AVP Croc Store, and we are set to get it underway. Casey Jennings to serve. Scott with the hammer through the block of Matt Furbringer. Dax Holdren, 33 years old. His kids, Kobe and Ellis, are 9 and 5 now. He loves the movie The Natural. This guy is a natural. 14 career titles, many of those with his Santa Barbara buddy, Todd Rogers. He has won here on the Jersey Shore before, has Dax Holdren. And Furbringer goes over the top of Sean Scott. We're tied at 1. Matt Furbringer, they call him the Golden God. I'll tell you what, he can be a monster. Played at Stanford, had great success, known for making the block that won the first title in a Game 5 against UCLA back in 1997. Fourth year, he has teamed with Casey the Kid Jennings. Big jump serve and a service air by Furbringer there. Sean Scott, five career titles, three of those. The last three events of last year with his old partner Todd Rogers. He dates female star Rachel Walkholder, who will be featured on the beach here this weekend as well in the finals. High school junior Olympic teammates with Stein Metzger. And the finish that time by Scott. And Casey Jennings, now married to Carrie Walsh. He and his partner, Matt Furbringer, are in their first final since winning Hermosa last year. And I will tell you, Jennings and Furbringer, in the year 2004, won their first ever title together right up the street in Belmar, New Jersey. And here's the kid. Holdren is a lefty. Jennings is obviously right-handed. Well, look at this. The set's close in that Casey really has no choice but to blast it as hard as he can through the block. And he's successful. And this is what I'm saying. Keep the fire. That's right. He's ready to go. Now, speaking of the fire, there was a fired-up conversation 
As Jennings and Furbringer alluded to Mary Strong after their loss yesterday. And a violation, net violation. They basically had a blowout at the hotel. Casey Jennings and Matt Furbringer after their loss to Nygaard and Hayden. But you know what, Sinjin, you spent so many years with your teammates, Randy Stokels. I mean, when you spend that much time with somebody, it's like a marriage. And you know what, when you're married... If it's a partnership in sports or not, there's going to be times you don't disagree and you got to get it off your chest. Well, me and Randy never argued. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no arguing that both of these teams have uh, have done it the hard way. Dax Holdren, Sean Scott, our Bud Light, a road to the finals. Neither team really had an easy road, even though, like I said, it was three days. There have been this is their eighth match. The first day. Not too bad. Getting warmed up. Second day. Uh-oh. They lost to Lambert and Metzger. Then they had to beat Seaman and Olsen. Witt and Wong. And the tough day is today. They had to get through Hyden and Nygaard and defeat these Lambert and Metzger, the guys they lost to earlier, in three. And on the other side, Casey Jennings and Matt Furbringer finally get off that third thing and make it to the finals. Well, first day on Friday, they had to defeat Seaman and Olsen and, and Camacho and Mercer. And then the next day, oops, <laughs> they lost also, Hyden and Nygaard. And then the blowout. That's right. But they came back beat. Goblin Mariano, Gibbon, Rosenthal, tough, tough games. And Lucina and Rooney. How about Lucina and Rooney? Yep. They did great this tournament. And then... They take down Dalhauser and Rogers in three to make it to the final. So the number one and number two seeds were defeated in the semifinals. The top seeded team of Phil Dalhauser and Todd Rogers, Mike Lambert, Stein Metzger, the number two seeded team. They went down. Hyden and Nygaard finished fifth. A great finish, as you said, for Nick Lucina and Sean Rooney. Given Rosenthal, former winners this year, they finished in seventh place. And, and wait, why is Larry Witt playing with Kevin Wong? Because the legendary Karch Karai had his knee scoped after the last tournament. He is out until Manhattan. He's going to join us in the broadcast booth in both Atlanta and Birmingham. Karch is at home on the West Coast, probably watching today. Karchy partner, get better quickly, but we hope not to lose the legend Karch Karai for the rest of the season. Well, you know, when you have a surgery, it normally takes, you know, six to eight weeks for a scope. But Karch knows how long it takes for this specific surgery because he had it on his other knee at the beginning of the season. And he was able to come back very quickly. So he's planning on coming back in a few weeks to play in Manhattan. Good, good. I'm, I'm guessing he won't be at full strength, but it'll be good enough to play. If he's good enough to walk out on the court, he's going to give anybody trouble. Hard, hard shot. Big shot, block goes wide, point for Holdren and Scott. And, and just to, to wrap up the thoughts on Karch Karai, he did only miss Tempe, but there was a big break in the schedule. Fort Lauderdale, Tempe, it gave him about five weeks off. That'll be about what he does now, but he was out walking the dogs earlier today. He's ready to get back. And you know that he and Mike Rangel will be on the beach rehabbing that knee every day. Plyos, baby, Plyos. Uh, Plyos City. <laughs> Here's Furbringer. Come on, Casey, easy. Notice the wind there, Sinjin. Wow, everybody up near the net, and Scott and Holdren finally earned the point. Yeah, the wind is blowing from the right to the left on the screen, so that the advantage is on the left side of the score because you can really hit the ball into the wind. But what great defense. At first, a great did by Dax, and then KC picks it up, and then a roof, and one-handed plays out of that great ball control. And then Dax says, I'm putting it up close so my big partner, Scott, can get it over the block and down. <laughs> More of the men's final from Seaside Heights, New Jersey, in a moment. You. Right there, inside. You got line, line, line. Another great point. What a great rally. You know, you have two of the best defensive players out there with, with Dax and with Jennings, and they're both digging the ball getting chances for second swings, diving. Pretty incredible rally. Look, it, it just doesn't stop. Dax has great ball control, and he finishes it with, with a hit down the line. Five digs already in this match 
for Dax Holdren. I think he's just padding his dig stat. You know, he could dig anything if he just keeps the ball in play. <laughs> Todd Rogers came in leading the tour in digs coming into this weekend, but of course Rogers and Dahlhauser played a few more matches with all those finals. And the service error by Sean Scott. Dax Holdren last year with Jeff Nygaard. They got into six finals, Sinjin, but won only one title. That was in his hometown of Santa Barbara, and Dax was pretty frustrated with that. I mean, you get there so often, you want to come away and win more than just one out of every six appearances in the finals. Well, it's not just getting there. It's knowing that you can win if you play well. But the problem is there's so many good teams out here. It could be one of five different teams that you get into the finals, and any one of those teams can win. Now, he was kidding earlier with me today, though, saying, all right, it's week seven. We just got into our first final. Maybe I shouldn't have taken for granted getting on to center court for the chance for a championship. Yeah, they were moving the blocker, Sean Scott, because he was in the way of the server. You can't block the server. You got no one. No! And off the net for Jennings. So it's 9-4 Holdren Scott, and not really the way that Jennings and Furbringer have played throughout this tournament to get here to the championship, and they're going to take a much-needed timeout, and we will take it with them. Not a good start for Jennings and Furbringer. An excellent start for Dax Holdren and Sean Scott here on the Jersey Shore. Welcome back to the AVP Croc Store Seaside Heights Open. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage to later in Game 1. Everybody wants that Croc Cup at the end of the year. Right now, the leaders are Phil Dahlhauser and Todd Rogers. Now, Lambert and Metzger are only 36 points behind coming into this event, but they earn the same amount of points because they both finished in third place. Jennings and Furbringer are the ones who can make a little move in the standings here, as given Rosenthal a disappointing seventh this weekend. You have Jennings. KC the kid, 12-17. <laughs> KC is serious right now. You know, he said that the wind wasn't a problem. You know why? Because he was playing on the outside courts where it's even windier. So he's used to this. Mrs. Jennings will play in the women's final. She is in the house watching her husband, KC. She gets so nervous. Oh. You know what? I, I think she'd rather be playing herself than watch KC play, especially in tough situations as such. Uh, he knows this is such a great chance to get a victory, his first victory this year. He just cannot make those mistakes, and he knows it. And as Mary talked about, Sinjin, this is the third matchup of these teams this year, and Furbringer and Jennings have beaten him the prior two times, and both times they beat him, it was in two games. But neither of those wins gave them a victory here on the tour, so this one means yes. more than anything. No question. Regardless of the outcome, we'll have our fourth different winner this season on the men's side. And this is the second time this season two teams have come from the contender's bracket to battle for the title. No, no, no. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> and that ball just barely caught the outside of the line. And Furbringer comes around to the other side, hitting from the right. And you can see the line jump. If the line jumps, there's a good, good, <laughs> good indication that maybe the ball hit the line. And line. Matt Furbringer! And Furbringer has to do that a few more times if he wants to stay in this match. Look at him. The ball blows pretty close. He reaches up and over, puts his hands right on the ball, and blocks it straight down. Good, good. And angle. You, you, you! Furbringer could not keep it in bounds, and it is game point. Dax Holdren and Sean Scott. Thing, it is game point on your yeah, that was pretty much the same set as before, but Sean Scott 
adjusted and just shot the ball instead of trying to powering it by uh, Furbringer. Serving for game one. They will try again. Not quite yet. 2016. After losing in Game 1, Casey Jennings and Matt Furbringer came back dominantly in Game 2. They beat Tex Holdren and Sean Scott 21-12. to The winner will be our champion here in Seaside Heights, New Jersey. Mike Goldberg, Sinjin Smith, Mary Strong on the sand. Game 1 went to Holdren Scott 21-16. Game 2 to Furbringer and Jennings as both teams are seeking their first win this season. Text your message to who you think will have the most blocks in 2006. If you think it's Jay Gibb, text AVPA to 25000. You get it. Phil Dahlhauser, the beast, AVPC. Vote as often as you'd like. There is a small charge that applies. And how about Larry Witt? Larry Witt playing this weekend with Kevin Wong as Karch Karai out of this tournament. He will be out of the next couple of stops on the tour. He's set to return. He hopes for Manhattan. Had his knee scoped again. Again, as we said earlier in the show, Karchi get better soon. He will join us next week in Atlanta in the broadcast booth. Well, Karch is trying to break my record, I think, for knee surgeries. There you go. I had six. He's, he's, well, he's up to five surgeries total, two knee and three shoulder. Oh, uh, the shoulder's worse than the knee, I think. Good block by Dax Holdren. So the little man was up front. And you see Holdren and Scott switch it around a little bit. Well, you know what? You don't have to be really tall if the hitter is hitting the ball low to the net. Jennings tried to pull the ball cross court, and Dax makes a big jump into the angle and blocks that ball. Oh, yeah. He, he loves it because he's normally not the blocker, and he normally doesn't block when he is blocking. <laughs> Good start to game three. Trey's on the board. You. Wow, Furbringer got way up and over there. And that's where, do you think 6-7 beats 6-5? Well, 6-7 really dominates 6-3. Why, why the change in strategy for Holdren and Scott here, Sinjin? Well, that time Scott was serving the ball. He didn't want to have to run all the way up to that. Remember, this is their eighth match in this tournament. Even though it's spread out over three days, it's been hot and humid. And it's tough. It takes its toll. To serve the ball and to run up to the net every time and block is tough. He may be feeling a little bit tired. So he's letting Dax, when, when Scott is serving, he's letting Dax block. 4-4 four, four in the third. You should be excited about it. Dax to serve. Big jump serve. That was handled really neatly. Casey Jennings put that ball right back into play after Furby's reception and pass went a little bit wide. Not an easy set, but he did make a great set, nice and high up in the air. And now the wind, the wind keeps switching, but the wind didn't really affect that ball very much. So Furbringer was able to get up high, reach high, and hit hard off the block. The side of the hand disguised it perfectly. Sean Scott looking like the king of the beach that he was in 2004 in Hawaii. Five career titles, the final three of last year with Todd Rogers, and they broke up. So, so the hottest team at the end of last year broke up, and the MVP of the AVP Tour got dumped. Crazy, tumultuous offseason for the men's tour on the Crocs side. And Jennings with the finish. You know, it, it was crazy starting out this year, but when I look at it, 
all the teams are 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 most of them are better. Yeah. Basically, most of them are better, and nobody really lost out. Sean Scott picked up Dax. I mean, you know, Dax and and uh, and and Todd were partners for a long time, and dominant. And Dax is an awesome player. So Sean really didn't lose out. What a battle! Going Holdren Scott. Did you hear Holdren screaming? Why not? <laughs> he really sound like that, though. The line was so open, he wanted his partner to shoot the line, and he did off the block. Bam. Matthew. Furbringer, 7-6, so they're just trading side outs here. Yeah, but you know, they're on the good side, Furbringer and Jennings, and they really have to score points on the good side. It's very difficult on the side to the right with the wind at your back to score points. And the good side is, you talked about, Sinjin, is into the wind because you can hammer away. That wind will keep the ball in play. You don't get those floaters that get away from you and wheel way out of bounds. Jennings finds the corner. Six, Jennings Furbringer. Jennings made a great move behind the block to pick up that shot. Gets a great set and is able to shoot it over the block. And Holdren wasn't able to run that one down. Third at Tempe. Third at Hermosa. Third at Sacramento. Hoping that this time their third straight Final Four will mean a first here in Seaside Heights. 20 digs by Jennings. That could be close to a record. Wow. And cut. The foot is legal, but it does go out of bounds. That would have been a legal wow. return by Casey Jennings. 8-7. First one of 15 will be crowned champion right here on FSN. You know what? The Crocs guys know what they're doing. First of all, they get themselves involved with the AVP Tour, and then they bring the Crocs boat to the Atlantic Ocean. That's no small boat. No. That's a 75-footer. <laughs> wow. That's an awesome boat. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody walking around in their Crocs here. Always coming to the Atlantic Ocean for tournaments. New Jersey, as I said, has hosted a tournament every year since 1991. We will have our fourth winner on the men's side, regardless of who reigns supreme here in Game 3. And Casey Jennings is looking to join Mike and Patty Dodd on an exclusive list. Married couples winning Crow Beach Volleyball titles on the same weekend. A Jennings victory combined with a Kerry Walsh win would add them to the list, which the Dodds accomplished four times. You go, I go. Off the block for the point, Sean Scott. Let's take a look at this one again. Here is a great set by Furbringer. The shot gets slammed down by Holdren. And then a great dig by Scott. Those rolls are reversed. And there it is, off the block. <laughs> they got to take advantage of everything they can. They're on the good side right now. They got to score points. Time out. And continuing with that theme of couples reigning supreme on the same weekend, don't forget Sean Scott won Boulder last year. His girlfriend, oh, yes, Rachel Walkholder, also won in Boulder last year. But they are not married. Sinjin Junior. will be back in a moment. He and Mary Strong are going in circles right now. You know, and I want to have a, one of those huge pizzas we saw <laughs> just before I go on that ride. I'll tell you what, there's some there's some pizza hat. This is we're definitely we're definitely in Jersey. Bigger pizzas than I've seen in my life. I'm Absolutely. telling you, I couldn't get my arms around them. They're so big and they're good too. 
There you go. That's, that's what you're talking that. about, right? Insane. I, have you ever seen one that big? No, I have not. It's only here on this boardwalk. They got the craziest stuff I have ever seen. Besides the the deep fried, you know, peanut butter and jelly, Oreo, Twinkie. They got some weird games too. Basically, what? Well, what was it? What was it? Shoot the shoot the geek with the paintball gun. The guy's standing there, a live person, and they go, "Go ahead, shoot me." <laughs> he's, all, he's, all he's all bandaged up. He's all protected. And he tried to get us to do it last night, but I, I felt bad for the guy. I don't, yeah. I don't know that he's really a geek, but shooting a paintball at a guy who has no defense, it just doesn't seem right. Oh, God. And then all the typical ones, throw the baseball, throw the football. You tried both. You suck. I excel. I excel. <laughs> Pure athleticism, you were amazed. You look good, you just didn't hit anything. <laughs> That's what my hockey coach used to tell me. You have Jennings! Oh yeah! Nine eight! And Dax again is up block, and that tells me Sean Scott may be just a tad tired. But you know what? <laughs> Dax is holding his fist. It must have hit his hand the wrong way. I don't think he liked it very much. Native of the Big Island, Sean Scott. Short serve off the net court is legal. Jennings chases it down. Fair bringer on two. What an awesome run down by Casey Jennings. But let's watch the serve first. The serve hits the top of the net, stays there for a little while. Doesn't decide what side it wants to fall on. Goes over the net, it's playable. The shot goes over the block. Watch Casey Jennings running, and it's touched, so it has to be up to the net for the set, and Furbringer hammers it down. What a great set by Casey Jennings to make that play. 10-8. Game to 15, must win by two. Sean Scott off of Furbringer's hand. 10-9. You know, and that play was set up perfectly for the angle hit. Furbringer was blocking all the angle. Jennings was on the line, waiting for the line shut. But the ball got inside the block. Well, Furbringer, if he wants to be considered a dominant big man, must take opportunities like this and win. You got no one. Come on. And it works. What a dig. Not this time. Mets final from Seaside Heights, New Jersey, in a moment. We gotta win this final. Fox Sports is proud to be the new home of the BCS, which is coming off of the highest ratings in its history. Beginning in January, Fox will be home to the Tostitas Fiesta Bowl, the Orange Bowl, the All-State Sugar Bowl, as well as the new Tostitos BCS National Championship game. The BCS moves to Fox beginning in January 2007. You have Jennings found the line. And Casey sees there's no angle here. He goes up and just slices it down the line. A tough play to hit, but he's able to get it by by the big block of Sean Scott. The joust still alive. Yes, yes. Come on. Come on. Oh, what a shot by Sean Scott. And even though Sean Scott ends the rally with a tremendous cut shot, he's still arguing because he thought it was a mishandled ball on the other side of the court. He got the point, but he's still arguing. Second time we've seen that team do that. It's 11-11. And you know what? They're not arguing for that play, obviously, because they got the point. They're arguing for the next one. No they do not want the referee to make any mistakes that might go against them later on. Right there inside. You got no. Caught the corner. 12-11. Not only did it catch the corner, 
but it almost took Sean Scott's head off. The ball went right by the ear of Sean oh. Scott. He ducked it and hit the corner. 12-11, Furbringer Jennings. That's what you talked about before. Ball boy whips it back and forth. Casey gets the crowd behind him and his teammate Matt Furbringer. And he makes a friend for life with You've the ball boy. Right. No question. <laughs> Short service. Scott with authority. Well, I thought Sean Scott may have been getting tired, but after that hit right there, big hit over the block on the angle. That was huge by him at this late late stage of the game. Gets up high, whacks it cross court. Huge hit. Well, a 12-12 game three, and you want your first title of the year, and for Scott and Holdren, first title as teammates, this is when adrenaline can take over again. Scott got his hands on it, but it just went out of bounds. And the point to Jennings Furbringer. What a men's final here in Seaside. Well, even though Furbringer and Jennings are ahead, they're on the bad side. They won't be able to take advantage of a big serve here. What a match. Played by Casey Jennings, the kid from Las Vegas, Nevada. Scott takes advantage of being on the good side. And Furbringer, his job that time was to block the angle, and he knows he that was his ball. Jennings had run around to the line to dig the line. So that's why I know Furbringer was supposed to take away all that angle, and he did not drop into the angle to take that hit. Thirteen, thirteen. Sean Scott to serve. Jennings off of Holdren and out of bounds. <laughs> great hit. Jax got his arm on that ball. He made a great move into the angle and hit his forearm and rebounded out of bounds. It could have just, just as easily have been a stuff block. Looking for their fourth career title. It is game, match, championship point for Casey Jennings and Matt Furbringer. Not yet. Well, that time Furbringer reached into the angle, what he was supposed to do last time, and Scott took advantage of a wide open line and pounded it down the line. You know, earlier when I said first one of 15 is going to win, I knew that was going to come back to bite me. I just knew it would, because the first one of 15 won't win here. That's right. Got to win by two. I knew I was going to get caught on that one. You go. Look at Carrie Wallace, I'm telling you, she is more nervous than Casey Jennings right now. It's Carrie's husband against Sean's, Sean Scott, Rachel Wachholder, against Rachel's boyfriend. Rachel Wachholder, Elaine Young's in the finals here in Seaside against Misty May and Carrie Walsh. Will it be hubby or boyfriend who wins? Game match championship point. <laughs> they fight off another one. Well, Sean Scott again went to the line. He's been hitting angle pretty much most of the game. Furbringer now is taking the angle and is leaving the line open, hoping Casey Jennings can dig that ball, but that's just too much of a hit. And it goes off the block. Jennings and Furbringer earlier this year involved in a 36-34 game and an 18-16 game. And you know, Kerry Walsh is feeling it deep down in her tummy. Okay, here we go. A helpless feeling as you watch your loved one try to reign supreme.
the fire. That's what I said. They have the fire right now. Let's see if they can finish it off. For a third time, it is once again game match championship point. Jennings to serve. Mrs. Jennings watching. Seaside Heights Open has been brought to you by Refreshingly Smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. By Crocs, nowhere close to normal. By McDonald's. And brought to you by AVP.com, where you can get live text voting results and behind-the-scenes interviews with your favorite AVP pros. Take a look at our Xbox 360 play of the match in Sinjin. I promise you, this is only one point. This is not two points edited together. Well, right about now, the rally should be over. But it's not even close. It keeps going. Great defense by both teams. And again. And there's more. Our Xbox 360 play of the match. That leads us to our Gatorade Champions interview. Here is Mary Strong. Casey, you had a rough start in that first game, a lot of unforced errors. How did you manage to get your folks back for that second game? Uh, you just got to keep growling. Fortunately, you get to start a new game. No matter how bad they beat you the first one, you can battle back and go and, and recompose in the box, and you start at zero again. So it worked out perfect. Matt did a great job. These guys are son of a guns to beat. Sean and da and Dax, I can't say enough about them. They're studs, and I love them. And uh, on the court, I hate them, but they're just good team, and I'm proud with my partner today. We're very proud to beat that team in the finals. Matt, you said patience has been the key for you all season long, and it finally paid off today. Patience, patience, patience. I started off the way I started off. I was like, all right, let's get this thing going. Casey was totally patient with me. We didn't panic. We've seen some other finals. A lot of teams lost the first game and came back and got control. So we just stuck with it. Had fun out there, and, and we're lucky to come on top. It was great. We had a great Woody win for us. On our side, Witty and JK from Toyota backing us up all the way, and so happy for our sponsors out here. And uh, I, two days ago, I told Geeter I was going to win this for him. So this is for Geeter. And hi, mom and dad. I love you very much. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. What Tommy an Knock. exciting, I say, exciting. I say, exciting good luck to Mizuno Long Beach this week and the JOs. Good luck. Yeah. Bring home the gold. And Tommy I know your Knock. wife's over there too. Yeah. Congratulations, gentlemen. Great win. Back up to you. Thanks, Mary. This concludes our coverage of the AVP Crocs Store Seaside Heights Open presented by Bud Light, where once again in the men's final, Matt Furbringer and Casey Jennings defeat Dax Holdren and Sean Scott by the score of two games to one to win for the first time here in 2006. For Mary Strong and Sinjin Smith, Mike Goldberg saying so long from Seaside Heights, New Jersey. And congratulations to Furby and Jennings. You've been watching the AVP right here on FSN.